why? Why would you connect to angels and fairies? And maybe a better way of, of saying it is they can facilitate you healing yourself. So the, how do we contact angels and fairies? Like, how do we, how is this going to happen? Like, well, child, when first, you make believe, you're immediately connecting. And one of the ways that we're always connected is very simple. It's called imagination. All right, so we're just gonna jump right into connecting with angels and fairies. Why, why would you connect to angels and fairies? Well, being that angels have a direct connection to source and fairies are also connected to the deeper understanding of existence, these are reasons why you might actually want to connect with these forces uh, because they can provide guidance, they can provide healing, um, or maybe a better way of, of saying it is they can facilitate you healing yourself, if that makes sense. It will, it will as we go along. Um, and, you know, in that you can have healing, guidance, forgiveness, grace, mercy, joy, anything that's really going to lift your life up and take it to a new level. That's a reason to reach out to an angel or a fairy. I'm going to talk a little bit about dimensionality, which is just a fancy, for me, it's a fancy way of talking about how there are different ways in which we perceive and when we begin to perceive how we can perceive different things based on our sensitivity and our cultivation. Um, so almost like, um, Ways in which I like to think about perception and the mind is, is, is like flexibility of the body. So let's say you're doing a yoga class and in the beginning of your yoga practice for the very first time, you can't do a split. You just can't do it. Maybe you can because you're naturally flexible, but there'll be some people who can't. But then as you work at it, you become more flexible. Same thing with, let's say, cardiovascular fitness, any of those things, the more you sort of practice them is the more that the experience you have begins to change. So you may want to do a split. You might have a, a sense in your body of what a split might feel like, but until you actually experience the split, you don't really have the full um, sensational experience of it. Similarly to like cardiovascular fitness, like maybe you're going up the stairs and you're out of breath and then you work on it, you work on it. And then one day you're able to sort of run up and down the stairs. You're at Runyon Canyon, like running with people who are running uphill and it's a whole new experience. So, and, and what used to be, let's say painful or uncomfortable becomes exhilarating and fascinating. You like, you, you want to do it. Um, and so that, that's a really great way. Um, I like to think of dimensionality is that as you sort of work your, do your mental workout or mental, spiritual, soul connected workout, your mind and your, your ability to perceive actually expands. Um, and you're able to experience things that you haven't experienced before, or you experience them with a clarity with which you haven't experienced them before, or you experience things that you thought like, were there but needed confirmation for and then finally you get to experience yeah. that so how do we contact angels and fairies like how do we how is this going to happen like well you enjoying this so far did you forget to subscribe make sure to do so it takes two seconds just press that little button the red one you know the one just press it little like all right enjoy the rest of this content first thing to understand is that you've been doing it your entire life whether or not you know it and angels and fairies are archetypes and like us. So here is a something that's probably been talked about ad nauseum. You might have heard it or you mightn't have heard it, but it's like, oh, we're all one being and we are just a wave in the ocean of existence. So angels and fairies are the like, you could say. Not only are we waves in the ocean of existence, but angels and fairies are waves in the ocean of existence or the ocean of non-existence, depending on how you're looking at it. So if you feel that you were connected to your intuition, it's not really 
different from being connected to your higher self, from being connected to an angel and being connected to a fairy. So I could say that I am connected to all of you, which from one level of existence would be very true. And from another level of existence, you would say, well, you can see that we are clearly separate. So what are you talking about? That's absolute rubbish. Um, but you don't lose your identity and I don't lose my identity, but our connection also is not untrue. So it's kind of like what you would say in quantum physics is superposition. The quality of a particle to act like a particle or like a wave. Um, so you could say that, that when we look at something which is very scientifically based, quantum physics, quantum mechanics, superposition, we're all two things or multiple things at the same time. The same applies to angels and fairies. So you've all been connected to them by virtue of that principle, but by virtue of the fact that when you call out or when you've called out or when you've when you play as a child, when you make believe, you're immediately connecting. Um, so there are no wrong ways to do this. Desire is just enough. But a really great template for this is imagine that your body is a computer and your brain is the processing chip. And then, and actually what's really interesting is that all computer chips have silicone in them. And because of the behavior of silicone, that we look at using the quantum physics technologies that we have, that is actually what makes a computer chip work. And that premise of superposition, this ability of particles to act like waves and other quantum mechanics is what allows a computer chip to function. So you can think of it as like the computer chip is your brain. It works in these two different ways. So it works in the physical physiological way, and then it works to sort of act your body and your brain to act as like a matrix, a connection template for the divine. Um, and the divine is the internet. So the only difference is, is that in real life, we sort of have to plug in or connect via Wi-Fi for our computer to be connected. Mm -hmm. For us, we're always connected, but we can obscure that connection and um, or we can sort of cloud over that connection. We can never completely disconnect. We can have an experience of complete disconnection, but we can never be completely disconnected. So if I say, imagine a computer that's not connected to the internet, it has certain capabilities, but it doesn't have the same level of resources or capabilities that a computer connected to the internet does. So that's one way of looking at it. Um, and we will do things to ourselves sometimes that shuts down that connection or creates the illusion that we're not connected, um, which then allows us to feel like we're on an isolated system, which is generally what most people in our world experience is a very sort of three dimensional disconnected reality um, that sometimes links to the internet. Um, however, we're always connected to our source. And one of the ways that we're always connected is very simple. It's called imagination. If you like this content, make sure that you like, subscribe, and comment below. And we also have amazing link right there for some cool product. I know you want to check it out. I know you want to click it. Go ahead. Go ahead. Come on. You can do it. All right. Until next time, have a beautiful, blessed day.